Open your Bibles up to somewhere in the center of your Bible, Psalm 100. I've titled this uh, little message devotional, if you will, I've titled it, Make a Joyful Noise. Now, I know a lot of times some of us will say, well, that's really good, but I mean, the only music that I can play is if there's a radio nearby and I can turn the volume on. Anything more than that, and it all the wheels fall off very quickly. Um, you might be that way, and while the psalmist uses the, the setting of music, Ah, music to teach us. I don't think that it is specifically restricted to music and music alone. So if you, if you are someone and you say, I am not musical, don't dismiss Psalm 100. And hopefully this will make sense to us as we continue. Psalm 100, beginning in verse 1 in the ESV says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. There, as I'm just looking at this, serve the Lord with gladness. Isn't there an enormous difference between serving the Lord with gladness and serving the Lord with grumpiness? Um, you know, isn't there a difference between serving the Lord with gladness and serving the Lord with because you have to, right? The psalmist is saying this, and again, we, it, while it says make a joyful noise, I, I think that it goes beyond, it goes beyond singing, and I'll make that point. It says, come into his presence, this, this translation says, come into his presence with, with singing. The, the word singing that is translated here in the Hebrew, it could be translated as a shout for joy, a shout for joy. Now, I don't know if um, when your team is winning, if you are singing, ah, but I'll bet you there's shouts for joy. Amen? And, and, and a shout for joy or triumphant singing. But here's another translation that also could be used in this uh, verse, and it is this, a joyful voice a joyful voice there's nothing that is restricted to that being a voice of singing but it is something about being joyful when we speak are you joyful when you speak the people that you work with the unsaved people that you work with or even the saved people that you work with would they characterize your demeanor your voice the tone right I didn't say anything wrong. Yes, but it was, your, it was your tone. Would they characterize the tone of your voice as being consistent with Psalm 100, verse 2, that you are coming before him with a joyful voice? Because we know it might be that you say, well, when I'm at church, then I'm joyful. But everywhere else, the presence of the Lord is everywhere. And I think sometimes... I think sometimes, don't we do this when, <laughs> several years ago, Jonathan, since Jonathan's here, I was, I was dictating, um, I was dictating when I worked at the law office, I had a handheld microphone or a handheld recorder, and I was dictating uh, a letter to a client that I needed to do, and I'm dictating this letter, and I looked over, and he had done something, and, and whatever it was, was not that big of a deal. It was this. It was here. But what did I do? I reacted how? <laughs> like this. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? Oh, my goodness, I can't believe you did this. And I got done, and I went back to dictating, and I backed up to see where I was at. And it's like, you know, dear Mr. Johnson, I got your, what are you doing? Why are you? And I will tell you what, the Spirit of God convicted me on the, on the spot where I heard the difference between I'm talking and, and recording this letter that's going to be sent to a Mr. Johnson that I don't even know who it is anymore. And then when I was dealing with my son, it was anything but a joyful voice. Do you want a recording made of your conversations? And, and I, I share that 
so that God will, and, and as God convicts me, that you'll be right along for the ride too. I think that we all could benefit from this, of making a joyful noise to the Lord, realizing that whether we're talking to a coworker or a customer or the boss or our husband or our wife or our children or our in-laws or our neighbors or the television while we're watching politics play out before us, friends, the Lord is there. Are you making a joyful noise to the Lord are you coming into his presence realizing that everywhere we go we are in his presence and the voice that we use is one of joy? Let the words of my mouth, Psalm 19 verse 14 says, let the, jo- let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Friends, this is not just a matter of Now, when I'm at church, I'm going to make a joyful noise for the Lord. If you are a child of God, you are the church in the walls of this building and outside the walls of this building. On Sunday, during this hour, and the other hours throughout this week, friends, let us be a joyful people making a joyful noise even when we aren't singing. Look at verse 3. He continues and says, Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us, and we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. There is a God, and it's not me. And there is a God, and it's not you. The psalmist says that we are, that we are His. That we are His. This past week, I had a chance to hear um, a bluegrass group, uh, Cutter and Cash in the Kentucky Grass, uh, play over in Townville. Their fiddle player is a young guy, 17 years old, Ian Lane, and he is an amazing fiddle player. Um, he and I had talked and gotten to meet each other, and as we did and, and interacted with each other, he said, here, let me let, me let you see my fiddle. I said, well, let me go get mine. And he said, well, I don't know how long we're going to be there. And I said, I, I'm, I'm 100 yards away. I, I'll be back in two minutes. And I ran across the yard and I got my fiddle and came over. And when I walked in, he handed me his, his fiddle. He handed me his fiddle. This young man, 17 years old, has played numerous times at the Grand Old Opry. He handed me his fiddle. It's his how did I treat that? Uh, pretty special. And then I opened my case and I handed him, I handed him mine. And, and I knew, I trusted him because I know he's a fiddle player and I know he knows what he's doing. And so we stood in the back, one of the back hallways over at the old elementary school, um, probably where I got sent for detention when I was a little kid. And he and I, I played his fiddle and he played mine and we played music together with each other and accompanying each other for about five to ten minutes. And I took care of his fiddle while I was playing. Why? because it was his and it was special. He took care of mine because it's special, and we, and we understand that. Do you realize, whether you're, if you're here today and you are not a Christian, do you, still, do you realize you belong to God? Husbands, do you realize that your wife, she belongs to God? She may not have given her heart and soul to God as, his, as her Lord and Savior yet. Your husband may not have given his heart and soul to the Lord and accepted Christ as his Savior yet. But friends, we are created in the image of God, every, every one of us. We are his. And sometimes I think that we need to realize that for others and how we treat them. But the psalmist here is reminding me, we are his. We are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. And so in that, we are to live and to breathe and to act and to carry out our day, how we speak and what we do and how we interact with others, realizing not only are we his, but they are his as well. Do you belong to the Lord? Are you his? And do you live that way? Or or do you 
take it for granted? Do you treat yourself like you're an old pair of socks? Do you treat those around you like they're an old jacket? If you lose it, you got it. If you don't have it, it's no big deal. Or do you treat them like they are a special fiddle made by the King of kings and the Lord of lords? I think that we need to remind ourselves of what it means when we are His. John chapter 10, verse 27 says, My sheep hear my voice. Jesus said, I know them. And He says, My sheep, they follow me. Are you following Him today? Are you His? Do you realize that you are His? I hope that you do. And I hope that you've accepted Christ as your Savior today. Verse 4 continues and says, Enter His gates with with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. Friends, if there's one thing that I think we're missing and lacking in the church, in our homes, little kids, big kids, in the schools, in business, in our world today, it's a lack of being thankful. It's a lack of being thankful. I hear people oftentimes say, and, we, and, and I, unfortunately, I've gotten sucked into it a time or two myself more than I'd like to admit, where I grumble and complain about everything that's going on in our world. Are you somebody who you get out of bed and you look for things that you can be thankful for? I've got some friends on Facebook, and they post, not the garbage, but every day they say, today I am thankful for this and this and this. Are you a thankful person? We enter his gates. We come into church. We enter into the work world. We enter into the world around us. Are we entering with praise and thanksgiving for him? And we bless his name for all he has done. Psalm 136, verse 1 through 3 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. If you're a child of God, you should understand this. You should know this. And friends, if you have forgotten it for whatever reason, can you go back and re-remind yourself he is good and his steadfast love for you, it endures not a little bit, but it endures forever. He goes on, verse 2 says, Give thanks to the Lord, the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, verse 3 says, for his steadfast love endures forever. You say, I, I think he's, he's repeating himself. Why is he repeating himself? He's repeating himself because the steadfast love of the Lord endures. How long, friends? Forever. And when you say, I don't know what tomorrow holds, that's part of the tomorrow that his steadfast love is still in. When you say, but you don't understand what happened to me in my past, his steadfast love was there as well. And even where we stand and where we are right now, friends, hold on to the steadfast love of the Lord and give thanks for him today. Give thanks to him today and lift your voice before him today. Well, verse 5 of this passage of making a joyful noise, verse 5 says, for the Lord is good. Look at this. His steadfast love endures forever. You say, Pastor Glenn, it's a broken record. It's a broken record because it needs to be said, it needs to be lived, it needs to be believed, and we as believers need to champion this and live this out because we know it, we should know it, and it should change our lives. But the last phrase here is what got my attention this morning. It says, for the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Are you generational? Are you generationally minded? Are you looking beyond yourself? Are you looking at the decisions you're making and how it's going to impact and change and affect your kids and your grandkids and your grandkids down the line? It goes, if you go into our house <clears throat> and... Uh, if you're so, if you're invited to go see the rest of the house, right at the foot of our stairway, go, going up, on our wall, we have a picture of our relatives. We have a picture of our relatives, the relatives that have passed away and have gone to eternity. Many of them are Christians. Many of them were Christians. Some of them were not. But, but many of them 
were Christians. And when Jay was little, Jay is named after my great, great something or other grandfather, Jay Van Sice. And when Jay was little, three years old, he would look at the picture, three or four years old, he'd look at the picture and he'd say, I can't wait to go to heaven someday. Kind of wigged us out. Kind of, kind of, it's like, yeah, someday, not yet, calm down. Uh, He said, I can't wait to go to heaven someday and see great grandpa Jay in heaven. Are you thinking generationally that the investments that you're doing, the life that you're living, follow me on this, how you conduct yourself, are you realizing the way it affects and touches future generations? A lot of times people will say, well, I am the way I am because, well, I got that from my grandpa. What is it that your grandkids are getting from you, grandpa? Grandma, what are your grandkids getting from you? What, what traits and habits, what, what, what traits and habits are you passing on down the line? Is it one of being thankful? Are you, are you impacting your nieces and nephews for the kingdom of God? Are you generational? Because you say, but... You know, I don't know that I have a hand. I don't know that I can say anything. Friends, you do something more than nothing. Why? Because the Lord is good. And his love, his steadfast love endures forever. You teach those kids. You teach those nieces and nephews. You teach those grandkids and great grandkids as God allows you. If you can work in Sunday school or junior church, you teach them and you model it for them. Why? Because his faithfulness is is there. It endures to all generations. And we as the gospel caring members of the body of Christ, we should be proclaiming that because if we don't, nobody else will. It's our responsibility within the walls of these church, within the walls of your home, in the community in which you live, Don't let Christmas just be a time you get together and give presents. Don't let Easter just be a time you you hide eggs and baskets and you get new dresses and new outfits. Don't let holidays and vacations be a chance to just to be able to get away. Friends, take advantage of those opportunities and invest in the generational spiritual growth of those around you. We're called to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Are you doing that today? Psalm 45, verse 17 says, I will cause your name to be remembered in all generations. I'll read it again. Psalm 45, 17. I will cause your name to be remembered in all generations. I will be intentional. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be the active player to make sure that your name is remembered in all generations. Why? that nations will, will praise you forever and ever. I don't know what's going on in our world today. And I don't know if anybody else can tell me either. But as the body of Christ, as believers today, can we make a joyful noise to the Lord? Can we be more about singing than griping? Can we recognize that we are His and others around us are His as well? Can we be generational, not to preserve the stuff of tradition, but to preserve the gospel message of Jesus Christ so that generations beyond us will continue to praise his name? Friends, today I invite you to make a joyful noise to the Lord. Will you bow with me in prayer? Father in heaven, today we thank you for these words, these five verses that Oh, we've learned at vacation Bible school and Sunday school. We think about it in terms of singing, but God, you call us not just in our singing, but in how our lives sing the song of your praise, even without words. So I pray today, Lord, that each one of us here will remember who we are, remember your faithfulness, And in that, Lord, for your glory and praise, we will sing your praises to the world around us. It's in Christ's name we pray all these things. Amen. Amen.